I'm here with Kevin from Skywatcher, and we are right here with the Hack 125 DX, a new telescope for this year. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so about a year ago, some of you may have seen that there was a HAC 125 that was announced at a Japanese show, and it was released and then Quiv the Lazy Geek got a video of it and then everyone came to Neef and asked us about it and we weren't sure what they were talking about. Oh, wow. we, we knew what they were talking about but it's like how do you know about that? Got it. Um, we had tested about three years beforehand and it was like what? So anyway we found out they had shown it. It was a fun little telescope but it was a little difficult to use. It had a helical focuser in the front it was a little limited on cameras. It just wasn't something that on the usual use would be easy for people to use. Right. Someone recorded a video here, talked about my opinion of it. The factory found out. They didn't like what I had to say about it. But then a few months later, they send us an email. It's like, hey, we have this one now. And it had all the fixes that we had requested about it. So we got it, we tried it and this is what it is. This is the HAC 125DX model, or Deluxe. I hate the sound of Deluxe, so DX is always what DX. we call them. Um, Focuser is not a helical up front, now it's a primary helical design, so it moves the mirror up and down. It's a very precise focuser, even though it's one speed. The original one, I never saw the full production runs, but I believe they're threaded dew shields, which made them difficult to utilize. Right. This is a dovetail system, nice. very easy. And it has a little hole. Little yep. cable management port. Um, so now that the focuser is in the back, you're able to utilize the full 16 millimeter image circle. It comes with three adapters. There are two T-thread adapters. One of them is male, one of them is female. And then we also have the inch and a quarter eyepiece, or eyepiece camera adapter for like the little guide cameras. Um, 16 millimeter image circle, so 533 would work. And we've also been testing with 585 cooled cameras. Those are a little wider, a little bit more obstruction, but you're still running at like f2.5 at that point. Okay. Um, we are showcasing these new little cameras that we're developing, which are designed for the HAC. They'll be Skywatcher cameras. So the right size, and Just not right. too much obstruction. Exactly. They actually fit within the obstruction, and all the uh, adapters, by the way, have inch and a quarter thread, so you're good to go. And with F2, the, you know, the fact that it's not cooled is less of an issue. It's and... not as big of a deal, um, but you are going to need those high-speed shifted filters, um, being that it is F2. Right. Um, I've been testing this at home. 30 seconds, you blow the shot um, with some of these because it's, it's so fast. And you're in fairly dark skies, too. It's not great, okay. but... Um, but it's 15.7 inches long and it weighs 8.4 pounds. So you could fly this on a carry-on setup. And we've got right. it on the Wave 100 with the carbon. If you're going to a star party and you just want something little, this would be amazing. And it's so fast, you don't have to guide. Yeah. So, I mean, you could. When I was testing it, I had two of them. One was guiding and one was this. It was Not kind of funny to difference. see dual barrels on it. Um, it's just a fun, cute little thing to move around. I kind of see it as our red cat if you will it's just this unique little thing but i think it's a lot of fun to use because it's simplistic you can go out yep. pound out some shots for outreach people live stacking would be great on it so. how much like com combined with this setup that you have here or what are we talking weight wise uh 10 um 9 so 19 and then the carbon I mean, it's like under 25 pounds yeah, overall. Yeah, I mean, this whole thing. So if you're if you're wanting to get a decent amount of uh, light gathering power in a compact and a uh, flight capable yeah. setup, this is really what uh, it's designed for. Yeah, we call it a mini graph. That's what we mini nicknamed graph. them. Um, but it's a fun little scope. I think they're going to be really popular just because there's a lot of people who they don't need a big chip, but they want to be able to go do it. They want that speed. This is our Heliostar 76. This is our first step into hydrogen alpha solar, which is really exciting because I am really enjoy doing solar as many of us do. It also gives you a daytime option. Right, exactly. So the 76, and it's a full 76 aperture. There's been some in the past where it's 70, but it's actually a 60. This is a fully functional 76. It's 0.5 angstrom band pass with one Edelon. So you don't need to double stack with this anymore. There's not even a double stack option because there's no need for it. Um, 
so single LED on, and it's really dialed in to be exactly what the advanced user and even beginner are gonna want. A beginner's probably not gonna know exactly what they want, because hydrogen can be quite, there's a lot of sure. options out there. Absolutely. We've streamlined it to give you that, you know, high-end performance in a very clean package. So you get the dovetail, rings, handle, uh, solar finder, you get a 11.5 millimeter blocker, which is more than the scope actually needs. So you can use the larger chips. You can zoom in and still get that nice high res illumination. Uh, dual speed Crayford focuser, uh, inch and a quarter eyepiece. The inch and a quarter portion actually threads off to reveal T threads if you want to thread imaging connection. Imaging connection, that's gonna be my next question. Yep. yep. Um, the tuner is right here in the black collar. This is our Edelon cavity. It has the collimation lenses so we can keep the cost down with an internal Edelon. What I really like is we have these sunshades that come with it and they're fitted to just clip that's right convenient. on. Yeah. When they came out with this, with the prototype, it was like, that's a great idea. Like, because we're all doing this and yep. it gets obnoxious. Or a big sheet or something. It just and... looks weird. It all, it all goes into one portable case. Um, and then if you want to pair it further, we have a kit that actually combines the Helio Star 76 with our really popular Solar Quest mount. So you just pop this out turn the button on and it finds and tracks the sun. You don't need to know really? anything beyond that. And how does it do that? So this has GPS inside, so it figures out where it is. It will auto level. And then it has our patented heliofine. So it's basically like a solar guider and it will just slew around and center up on the sun and locks it in and continues wow. to track. We've sold these for a while. I'm surprised they're not more popular, but most of the solar guys and ladies out there who are using it. Um, it's like a game changer and it runs yes, on eight double A's or we do have a 12 volt uh, power adapter in there as well. Cool. I didn't know it existed. So this is new to me. Yeah. It looks like our really popular AZ GTI. It's right. part of the guts of that, but it's a, it's a single use, but it's a really cool thing to have. So if you have like a, a Lunt 40, 50, 60, Coronado 60, would easily work with an 11 pound system, but our 76 pairs perfectly, perfectly. with yep. it. And then um, in terms of the mount that comes, this comes with the tripod, tripod and everything extension, else? Tripod, extension, and then it does have a joystick here. That's oh, wow. how you would adjust it to center more. Well, that's it's convenient. It's very slow, very precise, so it's not quick slew movements, because we know if we go too fast, it flies out. The sun is notoriously difficult to find. You know, of course, you do have the solar finder this here. This just makes it so much easier, but then yeah. you have the reference right there as right, well. Right. So. Well, this sounds like a, a great way to get, you know, your hands on a, a scope at a reasonable cost and um, start to do some solar uh, yeah. observations and this is, make use of the daytime yeah. when we're all normally awake. The scope, this scope is, I was impressed when we got a hold of it. And I've, I have Coronado 90s, 150s, you know, this was really impressive. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This of is a, a great uh, day here at Neef. 2025 yeah. and it was nice to see what you've got going here at the Skywatcher booth. This is one of the biggest uh, I, yeah, Skywatcher I, booths that I, I've this seen. This is the biggest we've ever done. 2.2 tons was shipped here. Wow. wow. I'm not looking forward to putting it away. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you so David. much. Nice Always a pleasure. You. If you're still watching and like videos like this one, please consider becoming a Patreon patron. Memberships start as low as $3 per month with benefits, including opportunities to ask questions of our guests. Also, please consider to like, subscribe, and share this video to help us bring the universe even closer than you think.